Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to solve two examples. Example number 26 and 27 from chapter of force vectors, which is second chapter from the book of engineering mechanics, the aesthetics part by R.C. Hibbler. In example number 26, we are being asked to determine the direction and magnitude of F.A. force when the magnitude as well as the direction of the resultant force is given. In example number 27, we are being asked to determine the resultant force that is acting at point O when the two forces, their magnitude as well as the direction is given to us. So let's solve problem number 26 first, where we are being asked to determine the magnitude and direction of FA force. It means this magnitude is required and also this angle is required. Now this problem is to be solved using the method called composition of forces. In this method, the resultant is being calculated by summing the horizontal and vertical components first and then determining the magnitude of the resultant. But in this case, the resultant is directly given and also its direction is given, but the magnitude and direction of one of the force is required. So what we are going to do the x component of the resultant force, let's say that is FRX, would be equal to summation of the horizontal components of the forces which is making this resultant. So in this case, these two are FAX and FAB. So summation of all the forces that are acting in the x direction. Similarly, the y component of the resultant would be equal to summation of all the forces acting in y direction. But in this case, you can see that both, both of these forces are not along x-axis or y-axis. Therefore, their components is to be calculated first. Then their magnitude will be determined. So utilizing this equation where we can see that we are being given with the resultant force of 1250 Newton. And that is acting along x-axis. It means this is actually the x component of the resultant force, which will be equal to all the x components of the forces which is acting on this body. So the x component of Fa force will be Fa sine theta because this theta is making an angle with the y. So this will be the x component using the sine theta formula. We can determine the x component of Fb using the formula 8 and rate cos 30. Now utilizing this equation where we can see the y component of the resultant would be equal to the summation of y components of all forces making this resultant since here it is given that the resultant force is along x-axis so there won't be any y component therefore zero value and the y component of fa would be equal to fa cos theta the y component of this 800 newton force will be 800 sine theta means sine 30 degree because 30 is given here now what we are going to do in order to determine the value of theta as well as the value of fa we are going to place fa sine theta on the one side and shifting all of the values on the other side similarly placing fa cos theta on one side shifting this 800 sine theta on the other side what we are going to get as similarly we are going to get fa cos theta equal to minus 800 sine 30. So in these two equations where we can see that F is common. Now what we are going to do, we are going to divide these equations. As a result of that, F A will get cancelled. We are going to get 10 theta. We will have some values on the other side. So on simplifying, we are going to get 10 theta in terms of some value. So then taking 10 inverse, we are going to get the value of theta as 54.3 degrees. So once we have theta value placing in any equation like in this equation or in this equation, we are going to get the value of Fa. So on simplifying, we are going to get the value of Fa as 686 Newton. Now let's solve the next example which is problem number 27 where we are being asked to determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force when this Fa is equal to 750 Newton and this theta angle is 45. So using the same concept, the x component of the resultant force would be equal to 
the summation of Vx component of the forces making this resultant. So this will be then equal to Vx component of Fa would be 750 sine or cos 45 because this is 45 angle whether you use sine or cos you are going to get the same and the x component of 800 would be cos 30 degree. So on simplifying we are going to get the x component of the resultant force as 1223.15 Newton. Similarly the y component of the resultant force will be equal to summation of summation of the y component of all the forces making this resultant. y component of Fa would be 750 cos 45. y component of 800 Newton force will be 800 sine 30. So on simplifying we are going to get the value as 130.33 Newton. So once we will have the value of both the components then the magnitude of the resultant force will be calculated as. I hope you have the basics of force vectors where the resultant is to be calculated using this formula. So putting the value of FRX and FRY we are going to get the magnitude of the resultant force which is 1230 Newton force that is one of the answer that is the magnitude. The other thing that we want to determine is the direction. So direction can be calculated using the formula 10 theta is equal to the vertical component of the resultant force and divide by the horizontal component of the resultant force. So we have the value of FRY and FRX. So putting those values, taking 10 inverse, we are going to get 6.02 degrees as the direction of the resultant force. So this is how the calculations will be done when we are being asked to determine the magnitude of the resultant force and also the direction of the resultant force using the composition of forces method. So this is all from this video where we have learned how we can determine if the resultant is known and one of the forces required. If both the forces are given then how we determine the magnitude of the resultant force and also its direction. That's all from this video. Thank you for watching this video.